Alright, just going to make a video refuting the Calvinistic false doctrine of irresistible grace and proving that God's grace can in fact be ignored or resisted by the unsaved people. And it also goes back, ties back to the Calvinistic denial of free will in regards to man's salvation and is proving that yes, there is still free will in, in regards to man's salvation because Calvinism is based on just den denying free will. We're going to show some scriptures, examples of resisting grace and resisting the Holy Ghost that disprove the Calvinistic false doctrine of irresistible grace because there's examples all throughout the scriptures of this. So let, let me show you some examples. Here's the first one I'm going to show. Jesus Christ bemoans the Israelites rejecting him as if they could have done so but resisted the choice of doing so. Matthew chapter 23 verse 37. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets, and stonest them which are sent unto thee, how often would I have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathered her chickens under her wings, and ye would not. What's the significance of that? Well, they could have they could have accepted him, but guess what? They chose not to. They resisted the accepting of Jesus Christ. Why? Because irresistible grace is a false doctrine. You have free will. More examples of this. Stephen actually rebukes the Jews for resisting the Holy Ghost. Acts chapter 7, verse 51. Acts chapter 7, verse 51. Ye stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears, ye do always, res always resist the Holy Ghost, as your fathers did, so do ye. Right there, irresistible grace refuted. You can resist the Holy Ghost. He's preaching the gospel to them, and they're, and they're resisting it. Stephen was disputing with the Jews, and we are told that they were not able to resist the wisdom of the Spirit. But the mere fact that this is mentioned shows they could have done otherwise, but couldn't in this case. But in later texts, they do end up resisting the preaching. Okay, Acts chapter 6, verse 9 to 11. Acts chapter 6, verse 9 to 11. Then there arose a certain of the synagogue, which is called the synagogue of the Le Libertines, probably not, probably not saying that right, and the Syrians and Alexandrians, and of them of Cilicia and Asia, and of Asia, disputing with Stephen. And they were not, and they were not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit by which he spake. And they subdurned, sub, suborned men, again not good at reading on a computer, which said, We have heard him speak blasphemous words against Moses and against God. So I notice there. Verse 10, they're not able to resist the Spirit, but then others come up and are able to resist what he's saying. Why? Again, irresistible grace refuted right there. They're able to resist and reject it. Uh, there are Pharisees who actually heard the preaching of Paul and warned against fighting, uh, fighting against God. There would be no reason for them to warn against fighting against God if they were not able to just do exactly that. You know, fight against God. Acts chapter 23, verse 9. Acts 23, verse 9. And there arose a great, a great cry, and the scribes that were of the Pharisees part arose and strove, saying, We find no evil in this man, but if a spirit or an angel has spoken to him, let us not fight against God. They're saying that as if they could have done otherwise. Their free will would have allowed them to do otherwise. Even back in the Old Testament, there's a recorded instance where the children of Israel rebelled against God and vexed his Holy Spirit. Uh, Isaiah chapter 63, verse 10. Isaiah chapter 63, verse 10. But they rebelled and vexed his Holy Spirit, therefore he was turned to be their enemy, and he fought against them. They were resisting it. You see, it all ties back to the fact that man has the free will. See, man is responsible for their, your own actions. See, God can't force you to do anything. You know, in, in regards to salvation, if you reject it, it's on you. But you see, the, in the Calvinist worldview, if you reject the gospel, you, you could say, well, God, you made me do it, so why are you punishing me in hell? You see, the, the, the God of Calvinism is a God you can just put all your sins on him. Not in the sense of Jesus Christ saving you, but in the sense that you can just blame him for all your sins, which is a false God. Calvinism is a false doctrine. Irresistible grace is a false doctrine that comes from Calvinism, which in turn comes from Augustinianism, which in turn came from Gnosticism. So don't be deceived by Calvinism. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye.